Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to this scientist.com inside scientific and cyanobiological webinar titled Antibody Discovery by Single B Cell Screening in Beacon. I'm Liam Sanyo from the events team here at scientist.com, and I'll be the host today. Uh, we're being joined by Dr. Amy Shang, technical account manager at Cyanobiological, who will provide an overview of mainstream antibody screening platforms and then discuss mechanisms, applications, and case studies using the Beacon platform for antibody discovery. Uh, and with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Amy Shang. Amy, thanks so much for joining us today, and the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Welcome, everybody. In the next 40 minutes, I will walk you through the development of monoclonal antibody through single B cell sorting based on Beacon platform. The webinar will cover the following sections. First, B cell differentiation and development. Second, we will talk about various antibody screening platforms. Then we will get to know what is Beacon platform. The last, we will discuss a couple of case studies using the Beacon platform for antibody screening. B-cell differentiation and development. B-cells are the only immune cells in the body that can produce antibodies. B-cell differentiation and development occurs in two distinctive stages. Development in the central immune organs, which can be simply described as the following sequential process. Common lymphoid progenitor cells to pro B cells to pre B cells followed by immature B cells and then mature B cells. This process depends on the bone marrow microenvironment and involves gene arrangement, BCR expression and negative selection. The second stage is the development in peripheral immune organs, where the mature B cells migrate into the peripheral immune organs and are activated by specific antigens with the help of T cells. These activated B cells undergo proliferation and differentiation, thereby forming germinal centers. Mature B cells differentiate into plasma cells and memory B cells. Plasma cells are terminally differentiated B cells whose main function is to produce antibodies. Memory B cells, however, can survive for a long time in the body. Upon resedimination by the same antigen, they can rapidly differentiate into plasma cells and produce antibodies, therefore triggering the immune response. With a background of how antibodies are produced, let's take a look how antibodies are deliberately developed on various platforms. Hybridoma technology has been around for almost 50 years since its invention in 1975. As of now, hybridoma is still the most commonly used technique for antibody production, outlined as follows. First, single cell suspensions are prepared from the immune organ, usually the spleen of an immunized animal and fused with myeloma cells. Common fusion methods include PAG-mediated fusion and electrofusion, the latter of which shows higher fusion efficiency. Three types of cells exist in the cell fusion system, unfused spleen cells, myeloma cells, and the fused hybridoma. These hybridomas formed by the B cell the myeloma fusion are obtained by HAT selection and then screened with ELISA to obtain positive clones. Further dilution and screening yield immortalized monoclonal hybridomas that stably produce single antibodies. The disadvantages of hybridoma cells are it is a well-established methodology with very high successful rate. 
um, each functionality and affinity screening can be carried out along the experiment for screening and selecting the ideal clones. The cost is relatively low since there is no special equipment is required. However, there are disadvantages of these platforms. The first of all is that the cell fusion efficiency might be low. The success rate of fusion is merely one in a thousand even for electrofusion. fusion. State, suitable myeloma cell lines for cell fusion are not always available. Thus, there is a limitation in antibody species we can develop. Long life cycle, it can generally take two to three months from cell fusion to obtaining positive clones. Second generation of antibody development use phage display. It is another commonly used antibody screening technologies. In this technique, antibody genes fragments are cloned in vitro and inserted into the structure gene of the phage-coated proteins. Antibodies are then displayed on the surface of the phage via expression of fusion proteins. This step is called phage library construction. Antigens are then used to screen for a phage library for specific monoclonal antibodies, a step known as biopanning. The main steps for constructing a phage libraries are as follows. We extract the tissue RNA and derive the cDNA by reverse transcription. We obtain the antibody light and heavy chains by PCR and join them and incorporate them into phage genes. We transfect engineered bacteria with phages to amplify phages for antibody display. Specific phage screening is based on antibody antigen binding. The target antigen is immobilized on the solid phase and then incubated with the phage library for a period of time. Unbound free phages are then moved by washing and the bound phages are eluted by enzymatic digestion using like trypsin or acid or base. The eluted phages are used to infect host cells for amplification and the absorption elution process is repeated. After three to five rounds, phages that bind specifically to antigens are obtained. Advantages of phage display is that its application in a wide range of species the antibody library can be derived from immunized animals such as mice, rabbits, alpacas, and chickens. Antibody produced by an organism after vaccination or microbial infection or even samples from patients with autoimmune diseases. Second is that fully human antibody libraries are available and the cost is relatively low. The disadvantages of this platform is its susceptibility to the quality and the size of the FH library. There is limited affinity because most of antibodies in the library have not undergone in vivo affinity maturation, leading to the limited affinity of antibodies derived from the phage display technology. Third, no natural antibodies pairing. Light and heavy chain genes are randomly recombined in the library using the affinity of obtained antibodies might be compromised. Single B cell technology um, is a recently developed technique to produce monoclonal antibodies rapidly. Um, in this technique, Antigen-specific B cells are isolated from the peripheral blood or immune organs via fluorescence-activated cell sorting, also known as FACS or beacon technology. Specific antibody sequences are then derived by single-cell PCR. The antibody sequence is incorporated into an expression vector 
and the monoclonal antibodies obtained by antibody expression and purification. The advantages of single B technologies include that it is not limited by species. Actually, it has applications in a wide range of species. Natural cognate VH and VO pairing is preserved. Third, it has short development cycle. Single B cell source screening is fast and a large number of candidates can be screened within a day. Lastly, antibodies from single B platform generally show higher affinity than phage display. Single B cell technology screens for memory B cells or plasma cells, which have undergone affinity maturation in vivo, giving rise to a high antibody affinity. Of course, this platform has its limitation. Single cell sorting equipment is required, thus higher cost. The following is a comparison of the two techno techniques based on single B cell technology, fluorescence activated cell sorting, FAX, and beacon. Fluorescence activated cell sorting can be used to screen antibodies from human, mouse, rabbit, etc. It sorts out the memory B cells. Uh, not a lot of functional validation can be done during the screening and sorting process, and the throughput is about 10,000 cells per second. For beacon platform, due to a lack of plasma cell isolation reagents, only mouse pl plasma cell isolation is available currently. As we mentioned, the fax is based on the screening of specific memory B cells. Memory B cells are identified by binding of fluorescence labeled antigens to BCRs expressed on the memory B cell membrane. If the expression and purification of the antigens are challenging, it will be difficult to sort B cells by fax. The beacon platform is based on plasma cell screening. Plasma cells, which secrete the antibodies, have high content of intracellular antibody RNA, making it easier to obtain antibody genes. For antigens that are difficult to express and purify, beacon can screen antibodies using recombinant cell lines. Regarding the throughput of beacon, it can run four chips, a total 80,000 cells per round. Both of these platforms are high throughput platforms. Beacon is an automatic device with functions of cell incubator, biosafety cabinet, fluorescence microscope, and automated robotic arm which in integrates microfluidics, signal detection, and light-induced technologies. Based on the morphology and the fluorescence characterization of cells, beacon system can be used to conduct cell isolation, cell culture, real-time detection of cell secretion, and multiplex detection directly on the chip. In addition, the target cells can also be exported through beacon system. Beacon system is highly automatic and less dependent on operators. Let's take a look at the chip, which are the core component of beacon system. Operations such as cell culture, cell screening, and cell export are performed on the chips. Each beacon system can have four chips run simultaneously. Each chip consists of horizontal channels and vertical nanopans. The nanopans are connected by channels. Depending on the number of the nanopans, chips can be divided into various specifications, such as 11K, 14K, or 20K. For example, the 14K chip can have 10 channels and more than 14,000 nanopans, and the volume of each nanopan is less than one nanometer. 
during the cell culture, the cultural media will flow through the channel at relative low speed. So the nutrients in the media can enter the nanopans from the channels through the diffusion. At the same time, the wastes produced by cell metabolism can also diffuse into the channels from the nanopans and then circulate out of the chip. However, larger particles such as cells or microbeads can remain stale and not affected by the mobile phase when they enter the nanopans. So the long-term dynamic cell culture observation and analysis can be realized. Because of the volume of nanopan is in nanoliter, 10,000 volume of a single well of the 96 well plate, the concentration of the cell secretion is relative high, even at the single cell level. And therefore, the single cell level detection can be easily achieved. The antibody screening through beacon platforms generally includes five steps. Um, cell import, cell screening validation tests, target cell export, and antibody gene amplification. Among them, cell import validation test and export are accomplished by the beacon system. Beacon platforms use plasma cells for antibody screening, for which the plasma cells need to be enriched from the lymphoid tissues at first. There are usually two methods for plasma cell enrichment, fluorescence-activated cell sorting and magnetic beads-based sorting. Compared with fluorescence-activated cell sorting, the magnetic bead sorting is faster and less damaging to cells. In view of this, magnetic bead-based sorting is usually preferred. The principle of cell sorting using immunomagnetic beads is as follows. Based on the binding characteristics of cell service antigen and specific antibody coupled magnetic beads, when there is external magnetic field, the cells coupled to the magnetic beads through the antibodies are absorbed and retained in the field. And then the target cells can be isolated. Using differently labeled cells, Magnetic bead sorting generally can be divided into two categories, positive screening or selection and negative selection. In positive selection, the target cells are obtained, while in negative selections, the non-target cells are removed. Taking mouse as example, the phenotype of mouse plasma cells is CD138 positive and B20 negative. We generally use a combined selection method that integrates both positive and negative selections. That is, the B20 positive cells can be first removed by negative selection, and then CD138 positive cells can be obtained by positive selections. After two sequential rounds of positive and negative selections, the purity of plasma cells can reach 90%, and the cell variability can be maintained at 98%. Normally, we can obtain approximately 1 million plasma cells from an immunized mouse. After completing plasma cell isolation, the plasma cells can be imported into the chip. Firstly, the plasma cells are imported into the channels and unified distributed. Uniformed distributed. Next, the plasma cells in the channels will be put into the nanopans using optical electropositioning OEP technology through beacon system. And meanwhile, the redundant cells in the channel will be flushed out of the chip. Finally, beacon system will automatically run the cell culture mode. 
doing cell import, the concentration of imported cells should be paid special attention to. If the cell concentration is too high, there will be cell adhesion, leading to multiple cells in one nanopan and the production of polyclonal antibodies. On the other hand, if the cell concentration is too low, some nanopans will be empty, resulting in the decreased utilization of the chip. Here in this video, it shows a nicely distributed chip with majority of the nanopans filled with only one single B cell. After B cells are imported, the target cells can be screened based on the principle of antigen antibody binding. The antigen coated magnetic beads and fluorescent secondary antibodies are imported into the channels. If the antibodies produced by the cells in the nanopans are the specific target antibodies, they will bind to the beads and the fluorescent secondary antibodies. We can, can catch the fluorescence beads by taking multiple snapshots and the dynamic fluorescence generation process can also be observed simultaneously. Then the positive clones can be screened out through these rounds. Since the plasma cells in the nanopans with fluorescence beads are just the positive clones capable of producing specific antibodies. Here we can show in see in this video the nanopans harboring the positive clones emit fluorescence signals that can be recognized by the beacon. In beacon system, we can also check cross -re species reactivity by replacing the antigen coated on the magnetic beads with those from other species. Uh, we just need to change the pro the protein and validate in the same way. Generally, the antigen coated on the magnetic beads are recombinant proteins, and the confirmations are not completely consistent with natural proteins. This might lead to situations where the antibody screened with an recombinant antigen might not necessarily bind to natural proteins. Besides, um, for some antigens, that are difficult to express and purify in vitro, um, such as GPCR, and we will, it's difficult for us to obtain their obtain uh, recombinant antigens with stable structures. Then we'll use stable recombinant cell lines instead of the beads for antibody screening. There are two methods to perform ligand blocking validation. The first is to block the antigen coated on the beads with ligands to form stable composite microbeads. And then import these beads and fluorescent secondary antibodies into the channel. If the plasma cells in the nanopans produce antibody blocking antibodies, these antibodies cannot bind to the antigens on the beads, and then the fluorescent secondary antibodies also cannot be indirectly mixed to the beads through a specific binding, therefore resulting no fluorescence of beads. On the contrary, the beads will become fluorescent if the plasma cells producing non-blocking antibodies. Second way is that the antigen coated beads are imported into nanopans so that the antibody produced by the plasma cells combine to the antigen first. And then the fluorescence labeled ligands are imported. Similarly, if fluorescence can be captured into the nanopan, the non-blocking antibodies are produced. Conversely, the blocking antibodies are produced. As shown in this figure, among the four nanopans marked in the blue and the red, fluorescence was detected in those two blue nanopans. So the plasma cells in these nanopans produce non-blocking antibodies, while in no fluorescence were detected in those two red 
nanopins, indicating that plasma cells in these locations produce blocking antibodies. After target clones are confirmed through validation tests, the target cells can be exported. The export is also performed by using the OEP technology through the beacon system. The cells can be pushed out of the nanopins and flushed into the mobile phase. You can show it over here. It is worth noting that in addition to export target cells, be consistent can also perform reverse transcription reaction directly on the chip, that is directly obtaining the cDNA sequence of the target antibody, but the cost will be relative higher. Now, let's take a look of a couple case studies of antibody developed on Beacon system. Anti-ID antibody is an antibody that can specifically recognize the variable region of an antibody, which is widely used in the pharmacokinetic PK and pharmacodynamic studies, PD, of the antibody drugs during the drug development. For example, in PK studies, anti-ID antibodies are used to detect the levels of antibody drugs in vivo. In addition, anti-ID antibody can be used as positive control antibodies for ligand binding assays and antibody blocking assays. Anti-ID antibodies can be divided into two types, antigen blocking type, the binding site of anti-ID antibody is exactly the same as that of antibody drug and a target protein, which can be used to detect the level of free antibody drugs in vivo. The other type is the antigen non-blocking type. The binding of the antibody uh, anti-ID antibody to the antibody drug does not block the binding of antibody drug to the pro and target protein which can be used to detect the total amount of antibody drugs in the body, including free and target protein bound antibody drugs. How anti-ID antibodies are developed? During the screening of anti-ID antibodies, the binding to antibody drugs needs to be validated and excluding the binding to regular human IgG. The competitive binding to the target protein also needs to be validated. That is, whether the antibody produced is competitive or non-competitive needs to be determined. We can complete the above three validation tests on the beacon system to obtain the target positive clones. Through the rapid immunization technologies from Sinobiological, we can complete immunization tests on mice to obtain plasma cells within two weeks. Then through the beacon, the validation of binding to antibody drugs, binding to human IgG, and compatible binding can be completed within one day. And then target cells can be obtained and explored exported. Next, the amplification of the target antibody genes can be completed within one week. Finally, expression and purification of the antibody binding test by ELISA and competitiveness validation can be completed within two weeks. The screening of positive clones only takes about 35 days, which is completed nearly two months earlier than that by traditional hybridoma technology. This shows the statistics from one of our case. After the tissues of the mice simulized with the antibody drug was harvested, cell isolation was performed to obtain immunized um, plasma cells. A total of 11,978 clones were imported into beacon chips, and 772 clones were screened that confirmed to bind to the antibody drug, of which 151 clones did not bind to human IgG. 
after competitiveness validation with the target protein, a total of 56 clones produced competitive antibodies and 97 clones produced non-competitive antibodies. Some positive clones were selected for subsequent antibody gene amplification and antibody expression and purification. By the validation of the purified antibodies, an anti-ID antibody that could bind to the full-length antibody drug but not the human IgG was obtained. Through the competitive inhibition rate tests, non-competitive and competitive anti-ID antibodies could be further obtained. Protein modification uh, refers to the group modification of protein after translation. Um, there are protein modifications such as acetylation, ubiquitination, methylation, and phosphorylation. Among which phosphorylation is the most common and important post-translational modification. The screening of phosphorylated antibodies can be carried out through the beacon platform, which can realize multiplex detection with a short screening cycle. Phosphorylated polypeptides are used, usually selected as immunogens. During the screening of positive clones, phosphorylated and non-phosphorylated antigens will be used for compound screening respectively. And then clones that are positive for binding to phosphorylated polypeptide and negative for binding to non-phosphorylated peptide will be obtained. In this case, a total of 12,400 clones were imported and 109 clones were positive for binding to the phosphorylated polypeptide, of which 63 were negative for binding to the non-phosphorylated polypeptide. That is, 63 clones were the phosphorylated specific clones we need. CD 47 is a natural immunosuppressive molecule that is widely expressed on the surface of normal cells. By binding to SRP alpha on the surface of macrophages, it activates the protective pathways and inhibits the phagocytosis of my macrophages. However, in order to avoid the cytosis of the macrophages, some cancer cells also imitate normal cells to express CD47, thereby inhibiting the activity of macrophages. Blocking the binding of CD47 to SRP-alpha by CD47 antibody is an immunotherapy for cancer. After the optimization of its FC region, the CD47 antibody can bind to the FC receptors of immune cells, thereby triggering ADCC, CDC, or ADCP effects, which can boost the tumor cell killing of immune cells. However, due to the high expression of CD47 on the surface of normal cells, especially erythrocytes and platelets, Earlier, CD47 antibody drugs generally caused severe anemia in clinical trials. The new generation of CD47 antibody therapy focuses on the production of fusion antibodies, such as antibodies fused to SRP-alpha, and the optimization of dosing regimens and antibody structures. In our case study, CD47 antibodies were screened using Beacon platform. After screening, there were a total 331 positive clones that could bind to both antigens and natural cells. By further expression and purification, a total of 108 antibodies were positive in ELISA tests, and 73 antibodies could block the binding of CD47 to SRP-alpha. Next, the validation of the binding of these antibodies to tumor cells and erythrocytes were performed, and it was found that two of the antibodies will weakly bind to erythrocytes and normally bind to tumor cells. Through affinity validation, it was found that the affinity of these antibodies screened by Beacon were almost at the same level of the reference antibodies. How about use Beacon to develop antibodies targeting virus? 
As the World Health Organization declared that monkeypox outbreak a public health emergency of international concern, Sinobiological developed the antigen and antibody reagents to be used in monkeypox virus studies in the first place. The A29 protein of monkeypox virus is homologous to the A27 protein of vaccinia virus with a stronger immunogenicity. It was reported that A29 protein of monkeypox virus is a target of the monkeypox virus specific monoclonal antibody and a key target of neutralizing antibodies. We use the recombinant A29 protein of monkeypox virus as the immunogen and completed the immunization of mice by rapid immunization platforms from Sinobiological. 321 positive clones were screened out by the beacon platforms and after expression, purification and subsequent Western blotting and ELISA testing, several antibodies that can bind to the A29 proteins with high affinities were successfully obtained. Sinobiological is the one-stop international reagent supplier and service provider. We have more than 6,500 proteins and 14,000 antibodies online. We provide recombinant protein and antibody expression and polyclonal and monoclonal antibody development. Our facility is ISO certified and our users in more than 90 countries have generated over 10,000 citations relative to our products in high impact factor journals. We provide high throughput production and screening services, as well as gram level of scale up productions to generate proteins or antibodies for our customers. Moreover, we provide productions to make antibodies in various formats, such as FAB, SLV, BHH, by specific to help researchers to answer specific questions. To better facilitate our customers, Sinobiological has a global response presence. We have offices in four countries and multiple production locations. Please let us know if there is anything we can be a help for you and thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Sheng, for a great presentation. We'll now move in right into the, the Q&A. Okay, so let's get started with a, a great question here. Uh, how many specific clones can we obtain from single B-cell sorting? Um, it depends on how many cells have been sorted in the experiment. If we handle it right uh, using good sorting reagents and cells are in good conditions, normally we can get around 30 to 40% of sorted population to be positive specific clones, and sometimes even higher percentage if the con condition is optimized. Perfect. Thanks, Amy. Um, so this, this next person says, uh, I'm developing mouse monoclonal antibodies. So for this application, how would you choose between using a hybridoma platform and single B cell sorting? Mm -hmm. So both of, the, um, both of the platforms can provide very good clones. And for hybridoma platforms, it is, it is very straightforward and there is no need to purchase special expensive equipment. So therefore the cost is lower. It is perfect to get a small to medium amount of clones with high affinity on hybridoma platform. Also, uh, once you obtain the positive clones and later say you want to uh, get more antibodies for your work, you just need to pull out the cells and do regular culture and purification. Um, however, the screening work might get overwhelming if extensive screenings are, are required. Um, for example, some researchers, they may want to focus on specific isoform. Um, however, this target isoform shares quite large homology with other isoforms. In this case, then we will need to perform a lot of counter screenings, which hybridoma platforms may not be able to provide in time. 
Um, single B sorting platform will be perfect for this case. Um, some in other cases, like there are scientists, they want a large amount of clones, say 200, 300, 400, um, all of these clones targeting the same proteins to ensure the diversity of clones. Um, this work may, will be definitely too tedious and lengthy on hybridoma platform, but uh, single B sorting will be able to help. So usually um, I schedule a meetings with the scientists to understand their needs, their specifications, timeline and budget around the antibody development project um, and work with our R&D team so that we can propose a suitable platforms for them. All right, yeah, great answer. Um, all right, we've got a, another really good question here. So. Uh, in your pr presentation, you talk about uh, antibody development in mice, in rabbits, and llamas. So how does the choice of species affect the results? Um, yes, since the structure of antibodies from different species uh, might differ, the results could also vary a lot. Um, for example, mouse antibodies, they are, they are conventional. So a lot of research were using mouse antibodies just fine. Then the developmental platforms for rabbit antibodies get established um, and it got popular for that. Rabbits can't recognize a broader diversity of antigens. So um, it is a better system to develop antibodies um, that are less immunogenic in mouse system. And also um, the antibody might be with higher affinity and specificity compared to those developed from mice. Um, so you might be able to get a cleaner and prettier IHC image if we switch from, from the mouse antibody to rabbit antibody. And rabbit IgG does not differentiate into different subclasses, which might make the experiment easier. And uh, a lot of times they are more stable than mouse antibodies. Um, another popular class, and it's getting more and more popular right now, is the nanobody from llama and shark. Um, they have distinct structural differences. Um, they're able to bind to epitopes that are uh, less accessible or, or antigenic. So they can be used to bind to cavity in the target and modulate the enzymatic activity of target proteins. Um, also, the blood clearance of labeled antibody nanobodies is very fast. Thus, um, it is very, very convenient to use them as a non-invasive uh, in vivo imaging. Um, but obviously, developing a nanobody is more expensive than mouse and rabbit because we need to immunize the, the camelid. Um, so we, we definitely need to think carefully about the application and what kind of results we want to we want to obtain in the end, um, and also time and budget uh, when we need to choose the species. Excellent, yeah, uh, great summary. Thanks a lot for that. Um, all right, next question here: Can we use uh, facts to sort out uh, to sort out the single B cells and proceed to fusion to make hybridomas? Um, Yes, as we discussed in the in the webinar, so um, specific B cells they have they have those antibodies expressed on the surface, and we can sort them out. Um, however, one thing to notice is those the ratio of those B cells in the whole population is fairly small, and sorting process might cause damage to those cells. So if we introduce either pack fusion or electrofusion to those sorted cells it will further da cause damage and lower the variability of those positive clones. So in the end, we, we might not be able to get any positive clones at all. Uh, therefore, usually we just use single cell uh, PCR or uh, do a little bit culture after sorting and then do PCR to get the antibody genes and then do recombinant expression. Perfect. Um... All right, I think in the interest of time, we'll just make this next question uh, the last one. So uh, in your experience, what's the ratio of positive clones in the sorted cells uh, and how might you increase that ratio? 
Um, the ratio of positive is um, usually 30 to 40 percent. It depends on the serum title, the conditions of sorted cells, the results of sorting and PCR, and in the end, recombinant expression. Um, so unfortunately, lots of clones might happen in each of the sta stage. Um, so to increase the ratio and number of positive clones we get in the end, it is very, very important to make sure that the serum titer is good enough to start with. Um, since if the titer is low, the amount of positive clones and the quality of clones are not expected to be high. Um, so for titer, if it's a rabbit, we set a standard of at least 25,000 dilutions and for, uh, for mice is 16,000 dilution. And also at the PCR and recombinant expression stage, um, it is important to have a stable system that can yield good sequencing and pairing and um, antibody expression and purification. Amazing. Well, yeah, Amy, uh, thanks so much again for sharing your insights today. It's uh, really been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you, Leah, and everyone. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. Big thanks to the audience for participating. So in closing, we hope you enjoyed this scientist.com Inside Scientific and Sign Up Biological webinar. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Have a great day, everyone. Have a good one.